Hi, and this is uh, a short thing uh, I had said that I was making this elephant this you for my daughter. And since I'm seeing her in Florida at the end of this week, I figured I should probably try to get this score you made so that I can give it to her. So this will be my attempt at taking the Satsuma Street Elephant Biscornu, which I have cross-stitched, and making it into a finished Biscornu. Um, the first thing I have to do is cut these apart. Bad news is it should be like a half an inch, and that's about all I've got here. So this is going to be tight this little seam right here. I'm going to do my best. Um, it's also recommended that once you have your piece that you zigzag the edges so that they don't fray. I am going to attempt not to zigzag the edges um, simply because I need to get this done. And I'm hoping I can do this all in one go today and have it stuffed and ready. I still have to get my polyfill out. I'm doing it with the same color floss that I used to stitch my back stitch around my blocks. I think I'm going to be okay. I will hunt down my pinking shears and by cutting it with the pinking shears I will probably, I may help to prevent the fraying until I can get my edges sewn together. We shall see. So. Sit back and we'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here we go. Pinking shears. They have the serrated edge, so they cut kind of a, a zigzag pattern. And I have to try to cut through the middle here. And... <laughs> I don't know. Not using my better judgment. I don't know. Maybe I'll cut around the outside edges first. And I'm not going to talk through this whole thing. I'm probably going to fast forward.
stitching on and on for corners and and it's going pretty good uh, no complaints about how the score new goes together I'm actually having kind of fun you can see here I uh, my needle came unthreaded so I had to stop and rethread my needle but other than that one time it wasn't too bad I'm coming up on to another corner and I'm gonna run out of thread and I'm gonna have to stop and rethread my needle and it's not a bad thing it's just it could have happened at a better time than on the corner <laughs> Well, I came to a perfect storm. I came to a corner, the fifth corner, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, fifth corner. And I, my battery died on my camera. But I continued on because I didn't want to stop, like, right there on the very tip. So I just came past a little bit. I've changed my battery. And now I've got a end off my thread. So, perfect storm. And I debated just going ahead and changing the, you know, putting a new length of thread on, but I decided that a lot of people like to see the whole painful thing. <laughs> so, I will show you how I end my thread. Then I'll stop, thread my needle, because now I don't know what happened to the floss I was using. I'm going to find that and rethread my needle and then I will pick up with starting the next thread. So what all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the thread is, you know, taut on the front because you're not supposed to catch the thread inside of the embroidery floss. You're just whip stitching those um, back stitched lines together, which is why has to be an even number of stitches all the way around so that you're going one on one. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snug that up a little bit and I'm going to put my thread back down through the back of my fabric and I'm going to flip this a little bit inside out, trying not to disturb it too much. Snug it up to make sure it's all kind of straight and then I'm just going to whip, like whip stitch a little bit of a knot here without going through the fabric just kind of catching this because I of course almost lost my thread um, I just want to kind of sew back and forth a couple times. I don't want a huge knot here, and I don't want to disturb the stitching too much. I just want to make sure it's not going to unthread on me again. So let me clip this thread, and I'm going to find my floss, re-thread my needle, and get back at it. Because I got little fuzzies from where the where I cut my fabric, but that's what it's looking like so far. Yep, I've got five, got it all zoomed in, so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but I've got five corners done, so I think I've got three more corners to go, and I will have it all sewn together. But I have to remember to stop, because I have to put the polyfill in. And the polyfill is just the regular, ooh, white out, stuff in stuffing and of course we're going to lop we're going to loft it which means tearing it apart in little chunks and kind of putting it back together because we don't I don't want lumps in my biscornia so I'm going to loft it and put all the air back into the batting so it's not all compressed and lumpy And I do this for everything, my dolls, anything I put polyfill in. You see, if you don't loft, you're going to have cellulite in your dolls. You certainly don't want cellulite in your biscornies. I 
Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this now while it's wide open and kind of put some in just to see. So that's what that's going to look like. And I may really be good that I'm putting some of this in the very bottom of it now before it gets just tearing more, just lofting it. I keep lofting it as I use it. And all that that I just did is only in this little tiny section of this Biscornu. Pull some of my fuzzies out of here. Um, and I did pick out these orange buttons. I was going to use gold buttons, but I couldn't find any that I really liked. So <laughs> as I've shown you, I have tons of buttons. Of course, I can't find ones that I really like. I'm going to loft some more batting because I'm actually going to put some more in here. I don't want to put so much in that it gets in the way of the um, sewing, the stitching. Actually, that may be about all I can do because I don't want it up here by these other edges that I still have to sew. But I do want my corners kind of stuffed there. It's going to be really pretty. Okay, uh, let me stop it, rethread my needle, and I'll be right back. Hi. I've got my needle threaded and my biscore news back. So all I've got to do is remember which way I was going. And I've got this little corner started. So I'm over here. And I've got to start my thread. So I'm going to kind of start it the same way I finished it. And you can see my polyfill in there. I'm going to just, you can see my fabric is kind of shredding. But that's okay, it'll stop. It's, it's all stitched. I'm just going to catch this. I did the double the loop method so it's all caught there. And then I'm just going to bring it back up near where my last stitches, what my last stitch was. I, I'm sorry. I think that's the hardest part is trying to make sure this is in frame. So I'm just going to bring it up here. Not going to snug it too tight. Okay, back to the fast forward.
exhausted. I know the feeling. Um, but I've only got this one little bit left to do. And this will be finished. And it wasn't that bad. The hardest thing was trying to make sure I just hit the, the embroidery floss and not the fabric. But all in all, it's not bad. And I'm almost there. Just about five more stitches, maybe. So I just have to end off and put my buttons on. And then we'll have a biscornu with elephants on it. Pull this corner up a little so I can finish it. Um, and have it ready as a gift. It kind of makes me happy because it gives me a, a fully finished object when I really didn't think I was going to have any finishes for quite a long time because I have quite a lot of hefty sized whips. Okay, well, not too bad for my first one. Not great, that corner's a little off. But, I move my fiber fell around a little. I just have to end off my thread. So then, before finishing my last stitch, which might be a little late, I said to pass your needle back through the loop that you're making. And get back under that floss. There we go. Sorry, I have to get it up under my face so I can see it. And do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my doll making trick. I'm going to just pass my thread back through another part of the fabric and pull it up. Oh, not too tight because I don't want to pull my corner out. <laughs> oh, I feel like that's a little lopsided, but. Oh well, it'll be okay. Pull the thread a little tight, cut it off, work it all back into shape, and then there is my Biscornu. Not too shabby. That's the bottom, and there's the top. And then Let's see. Um, let's see. Now I have to have some heavy cotton sewing thread, which we have right over here. This is called button craft and it's a coats and it's dual duty plus 
and it's extra strong. And it is extra strong. I don't know if you can see the heft on that thread, but it is nice strong thread. And let's see. I just want to get enough of a length of thread. A little bit wasteful, but better to have too much than too little. And a trick I learned for threading your needle is you should always thread from the end that's coming off of the spool, not from the end that you um, cut. Okay, so I'm going to loop that through my needle. And I will put a knot on it. And then I will just, let's see, where are my buttons? There are my buttons. Let me just check, make sure I like those buttons. Nope, I can get it right in the middle of the blue border. That orange button will look pretty. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the center here, which I think is that pink chevron. Because that's what I, gotta, I ha want to aim for is like coming straight through and I don't know if this is how it's done but this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start at the back because there will be a button back here too and then I'm going to put this button on Oops. and then I'm going to go back down through here just a little over from where I came up and aim back for the same area in the center of that chevron on the bottom and pull this button back through and unhook it from all those little beads that I already have sewn on the top. Pull that out of the way. Yeah, I like that. Pull it tight. That works, but I'm going to come up again. I'm going to loosen the button up a little bit and just come back up because I want to do it a couple times just to make sure. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> I'll undo it and start over. but it should work. I just have to get it to come up in the right spot. There it goes. Because I want to go back through the button. I want at least two loops in the button. And go back down, straight down, back, to the center chevron. Because all this should hide my stuff on the, that I do on the back of it too. Okay, let's see. Come on. Pull tight. There you go. So we're going to pull that tight. Hmm, pretty. Alright, so I just want to make a I'm just sewing through the this is where I should have a thimble on my finger. There we go. Just to help hold that button. Because then I have to get this other button on. Which is the same button, just a second one. And I'm going to come back up through. Do 
I get my needle to just go around this button, not show any thread. And what I might do is just loop it once around the button. There you go. And take it back under the button, back down through the center to this bottom button. Let's see where it comes out. Yep. That was looking like Bob's your uncle. Pull it through. I'm going to take it around this button. Back through the button. Watching me struggle. Pliers. Excuse my reach. Pull it through. Pull it tight. Got it. That button's on. That button's on. I just have to finish off my thread. Not that at this point I think this thread is going anywhere, because it is pretty well wedged in here. But I'm going to wrap it around this button. And there we go. Let's see. I'm going to go back down, right? Here. Try to come back out near that button. There we go. See? Very nicely poofed. Now I'm just going to wrap it around this button. If I can. Which I can. I think my daughter will like this. And she'll be able to use it with her cross stitching. So I'm just going to pull this back out through the top. Take my scissors and clip my thread as close to the fabric. There we go. And there is my Satsuma Street Elephant this new Gold buttons, I mean gold buttons, no, gold beads, orange buttons, whip stitch sides, Came out with eight corners, so that's good. I think that that's our finish. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is the first Biscornu I've ever made. And so if you have never tried it, what are you waiting for? You should try it. It's a lot of fun. And I did this all in one go. One morning, it probably took me I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, not sure. But anyway, 
Thank you for watching, and I hope you come back. Happy sleeping.